from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in Northamptonshire, the village of Wollaston. It's about 20 minutes drive from Wantage Road, home of Northampton County Cricket Club. They're playing a game against Yorkshire over the course of this weekend. There's been much change in English cricket since we last spoke to you on Stumped with Joe Root resigning as the men's test captain. And there's a new managing director appointed as well for the England men's cricket. So plenty to talk about throughout the show. We'll get to that in due course. Hi there, everyone. Jim Maxwell back here in Sydney after a spell up in Queensland over Easter. Probably the only thing of significance, if it's that, uh, was the confirmation that Andrew McDonald is going to take over as coach of all three forms of the game. And that seems to be a, a very happy outcome, particularly for Pat Cummins. That's the man he wants, a calm figure behind the scenes. He's got a lot of, lot of experience as a coach. And uh, we'll see what happens next when we start playing cricket again. Well, no major shake-up in Indian cricket so far. Hello, everybody. I'm Sharu Sharma for All India Radio, back home in Bangalore, waiting this weekend for the start of the Kalo India University Games, a big new sporting initiative by the government following the success of the Kalo India School Games, which is this very large uh, countrywide participation thing that the government started. And, of course, these are also to be the selection or the trials for the World University Games. So uh, plenty for sports persons to look forward to. Chara Jim, good to see you both. We're going to start this week with arguably the most famous sports book in the world. The 159th edition of the Wisden Cricketers' Almanac has just been released, where the top cricket writers and broadcasters have been commentating on cricket and the extraordinary wider circumstances that dominated 2021. Now, the Almanac, which is known as Cricket's Little Yellow Bible, been published every year since 1864 and it reflects on a year when Azim Rafiq forced the sport in the UK to examine more painfully than ever its attitude towards racism. The launch of the 100 gave a huge boost to the women's game whilst raising just as many questions about the men's and then in the last two months of the year Australia's men won the T20 World Cup and retained the ashes. Well to tell us more we're joined on Stumped by the editor of The Almanac Lawrence Booth. Lawrence, welcome. How are you? Do you have any sleepless nights getting this one put to bed this year? Hey, Ali, it was, yeah, there wasn't a lot of cheerful stuff to write about in English cricket, unfortunately. So um, didn't always sleep well, um, especially not when I was in Australia. No, that was a longer <laughs> tour than most, wasn't it? Now, just tell yeah. us, first of all, the question I want to ask is, who are the two stars who are named the leading cricketers of the year for this edition? Well, Joe Root is the leading cricketer in the world. I know he's just stepped down as England test captain, but he, he's got the, 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 the gong for his batting, had an exceptional year, 1,708 test runs, the third highest annual tally in test history. And Liz L. Lee of South Africa was the uh, leading woman cricketer in the world. She, um, she scored more ODI runs than anyone, 630-odd, and averaged 90. So she was quite a straightforward choice as well. Lawrence, Jim Maxwell, yes. What about the other names? What are the names of the cricketers who have made it into this book for, for good or bad? Hi, Jim. Yeah, well, there's a powerful piece at the front of the book by Azim Rafiq, who in many ways was was the man of the year for reasons that he probably w would have wished wouldn't have happened. He, of course, raised several allegations of, of racism against Yorkshire, caused a big inquiry, and really, he really was the catalyst for, for, for lots of players of Asian heritage and African-Caribbean heritage to talk about their own experiences. So he has forced English cricket to, to look at itself in the mirror and to ask whether it's really doing the best it can to make the game as inclusive as possible um so he you know his story hangs over the whole book really um and it's up to english cricket to move forward and do something about that hi lawrence this is charu sharma from bangalore india you've been fighting some people off on twitter but let me assure you you'll get many more fans because of uh, the some of the top five cricketers that you've chosen out from this part of the world so you, there's plenty of delight <laughs> i can assure you because of sharma and bumra but what were some of the key things that you wanted to highlight this year Hi, Charlie. Yeah, just before I, I talk about that, the point about Boomer and Sharma is quite interesting because it's the first time ever that two Indians have been together in the five, so hopefully that's something to celebrate. Wow. Um, <laughs> it, it, in, the, in the notes themselves, I mean, I lead on, it's unavoidable really, but I lead on what was a, a poor year for English cricket, both on and off the field. I mentioned the, the Rafiq scandal, which, which hung over the whole game, leading to the ECB chief executive, Tom Harrison, having to appear in front of a parliamentary committee to talk about um, the, the work that English cricket is doing to tackle racism. And of course, off the field, it was, a, it was a pretty poor year for the test team. They've now won one test out of 17 after that defeat in recent defeat in the West Indies that brought about Joe Root's resignation. 
So what I argue in the notes actually is that, uh, that, that, that last year the news emerged that um, Tom Harrison, the chief executive, and a few other executives were due to share uh, a bonus pot of over two million pounds for ostensibly for getting the hundred through. But my argument is that taking that bonus in the current circumstances with the game in such a, a plight um, is not appropriate. It's made a lot of people angry, and I've suggested that that money be given back to the ECB either to re-employ some of the 62 staff who were sacked last year or to be ploughed into the, the African Caribbean um, engagement programme, which has been run by Ebony Rainford Brent and is, is aimed at attracting demographics that have not previously felt welcome. So I think that money could be put to much better use than going in a few executives' pockets. Well, quite obviously, uh, English cricket's in all sorts of turmoil, and, and you, you mentioned a few of these points. But also globally, uh, politically, we've seen Afghanistan in some sort of you know trouble with the, the Taliban moving in in terms of cricket, the Afghanistan team, and also now Ukraine, although maybe less important for cricket, but there's some turmoil there as well. And, and how have you captured this on wisdom, if at all? Yes, well, we have. Um, we spoke to uh, Tuba Sangha, who was, of course, a guest on, on Stump Dally, interviewed mm. her, I think it was last year, and that, that actually gave me the idea for, for getting her in wisdom. She, she used to work for the Afghanistan Cricket Board, and she was forced to flee the country when the Taliban took over, um, and she's spoken quite movingly in her piece in wisdom about um, hoping that the world doesn't forget her, the Afghanistan women's team, uh, and also making a good point about saying if you if you ban the Afghanistan men's team, um, that won't necessarily have a good impact on the women's side. If the men aren't playing, the women certainly aren't going to be playing because of the Taliban's uh, attitude. And you, you mentioned Ukraine. Um, oddly enough, we, we had a piece on cricket in Ukraine in our Cricket Around the World section. It was written before uh, the war started. So, you, you know, you don't get a much of a flavour of, of what was happening. I think the uh, some of the tension in the eastern part of the country is mentioned, but it was more about how you, uh, cricket in Ukraine was growing. I suspect that's not the case anymore, and we, we don't know if that situation will will ever improve, really. It was interesting to note that the last ICC uh, board meeting, of course, they've got this Afghanistan working group set up. Uh, the ACB, the, the Afghanistan Cricket Board, confirmed their commitment to developing the women's game, and the board said that they will submit, quotes a full uh, action plan and budget to do so to the ICC's working group that's been set up. There hasn't been a time frame set on that, so I think it is something certainly to, to be keeping an eye on. But, yeah, I was really heartened to, to see Tuba you know, making her contribution to Wisdom, certainly, but it is something which absolutely needs to be kept at the forefront. Yes. I mean, I, I think Tuba makes the point that, that please don't forget us. I mean, she, she thought there might be a bit more support from other women's teams around the world. There was initially, there was a lot of sympathy when it became clear that the Afghanistan women's team was going to be in trouble because of the Taliban. Uh, but it, it's sort of gone quiet as a story. Um, you know, people have their own lives to lead and she, she wants people to remember uh, the situation that she and her, her colleagues are in. Lots of them are in hiding. You know, they're, they're not able to speak freely. Um, they're worried about being tracked down. Um, lots have had to leave the country. It's, it's a desperately sad story and we shouldn't forget it. One thing I wanted to pick up on, Lawrence, is the, the naming and the convention of the naming of the, the leading cricketers of the year. Because when you first look at Joe Root, who is the leading cricketer in the world, and then there is the leading woman cricketer in the world, just explain how and why those awards are termed as they are. Because there's been such a move, hasn't there, to ensure that women aren't seen as sort of other, where there's this assumption that a cricketer is a man and then a woman's award makes it seem like it's been an, an add-on. Yeah, and, and you raise a fair point. I mean, look, the thinking behind it was that women in general in cricket history have been excluded. And, you know, include wisdom in this, we haven't, we didn't start naming a leading woman cricketer in the world until 2014. Um, so what we, we didn't want to do was exclude them further. We didn't want to uh, not give women cricketers the chance to win the overall award. So that's why the, the, the main award is called the leading cricketer in the world. And women are eligible to win that. But because... While we wait for, for women's cricket to catch up in general, in terms of professionalism, you know, the Australian team, we saw how good they are, but there is a big gap between them and the rest of the world, though other sides are catching up with, with England and some have overtaken them. Um, and, until that moment, we felt probably men would end up winning the leading cricketer in the World Award, so we didn't want to have women not getting their own award. Um, but look, I, I appreciate what you say, and there may well we may well have reached the point where it should just be the leading uh, male cricket, the leading female cricket. That's certainly something for us to think about. Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us on Stumped. Thanks for having me, guys. All the best. That's Lawrence right. Booth, editor of Wisden Cricketers Almanac. Well, the only constant thing about English cricket at the moment seems to be change. First on route, well, he has stepped down after five years in charge, citing the toll and the impact 
that the role has had on him. He led his country in a record 64 tests. He's overseen more wins than any other England test captain with 27, but he's also overseen more defeats as well with 26, including a dire run of just one win in the last 17, which really seemed to be the tipping point. But then you look at Root's runs tally, and it is extraordinary in the face of all of this. 5,295 runs as captain, the most by any England skipper. He scored 14 centuries whilst in position, and he's currently England's second highest test run scorer of all time behind Sir Alistair Cook. So good news for the team, of course, that he's going to continue to play. He just won't be captain. Jim Chari, we have discussed this a lot, and particularly Jim, in the wake of the Ashes defeat, that need for change. Are you only surprised in a way that he hadn't stepped down earlier? Well, you might recall um, some time ago, I think after the 2019 Ashes, I was abdicating the Ben Stokes should take over the captaincy when uh, they next come to Australia, at, at the least. But, of course, circumstances affected the, the likelihood of that occurring. Um, but I don't think there's any doubt that if he wants the job now, Ben Stokes should take it uh, because he's likely to give more inspiration and have a bit more nous tactical savvy than we've seen from Joe Root throughout all that time. I mean, I've, I've always thought great as, as great a player as he is, uh, he doesn't quite have it as a captain, and that's uh, un unfortunate for a number of reasons around the amount of cricket, the bubbles, all this sort of stuff. But it's really come down to um, a lack of tactical uh, awareness uh, more often than not, apart from the varying quality of the players under him and the uh, the amount of cricket that England have played. So, um, yes, where they go from here is a very interesting question. Do they have an interim a captain now or wait until you know Ben Stokes has got it sorted in his head about uh, whether he can manage it it's a it's a very tricky one even though the England women lost to Australia in the final they look to be in a bit better shape for major cricket than the men's team and that can be said about the likelihood of what happens in the 100 too which uh, it strikes me there's probably a bit more of a focus and future for women than men uh, because to me, the 100 for the men is irrelevant while their uh, test cricket is in such parlous state. But, you know, that's the manoeuvring that goes on about trying to get the game back into a place where people can watch it because uh, for far too long they haven't been able to. And, and that's had a big effect on the game. So Joe Root has been absolutely fabulous. And it's sad to see this occur, but it's a good thing he fell on his sword because I think the sword might have come out anyway. Um Rob Key, who's the former Kent uh, an England batter who has taken on this role as managing director. He's come from the, the Sky Sports commentary box. The gym, you know, something has been said about the fact that he doesn't necessarily have managerial sort of boardroom experience to step into this role. But, you know, is that, I, I'd like to think that cricket generally teaches you a lot of transferable skills. He's certainly got, you know, great ideas about the game and he's shown himself to be a real thinker through what we've seen of him in commentary. Yeah, well, I was certainly impressed with his work on the uh, Australia-Pakistan series as a commentator, and I've heard him in, at other times. So uh, he, se he seems seems to have a, a good head and potentially the organisational skills to manage this role. But um, you just keep coming back when you look at English cricket at the instability of it all, right? Who's going to be captain? Who's going to be manager? Are you going to go back to having a, um, a chairman of selectors? How are you going to select a team? Is, That's another vacancy. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, Andrew McDonald said it said quite openly the other day. He said he can handle all three moods of the game. Whereas in England, they're not too sure whether to have a coach mm. for the test and, and another white ball coach. I mean, it, it's just all over the place at the moment. Mm. So I think it's going to be a while before you get some kind of st stability there that's going to lead to a better performance. So. Um, uh, it, it, Gary Kirsten's name is his his name still around as a coach? Yep. And I wanted to ask you, you Jim, how much traction both Langer and Ponting have been getting in Australia. I can't quite imagine that Ponting, given his commitments with Channel Seven and with the IPL, has that had much traction, or has Langer been focused on? Not really. No, I think. Most people, uh, most of the punditry are saying it's too soon for Langer to jump to that role after being a Australian coach. And Ponting, well, you probably answered the question. He's probably got too much on his plate. They've been trying to get him into a role with the Australian team. So uh, 
No, I don't think that's feasible at this stage. Maybe, maybe some other time. But um, what's wrong with Kirsten? The name keeps coming up. Why don't they go there? He's got a good well, record, has he not, Charo? Well, in India, certainly. But this might be a mm. fabulous opportunity, just to be a little contrarian, for England to go back to the manager ways. I mean, you have a batting coach and a bowling coach. I suppose they're important and a fielding coach as well. But don't have a head coach. Just go with the manager and, and get on with it. Probably only to prove that it doesn't really matter. I mean, this whole coaching thing, you know, I'd like to go back to Ian Chappell uh, about getting you to the field. But instead of appointing somebody else and sacking him again, because I, there are just far too many sackings going on in, in English cricket. I don't think that's helping at all. And it might create just, you know, a little bit of apprehension for somebody taking that job up, saying that, what am I supposed to do? Win every test match or I'll be sacked in, what, half a year? So don't have one. How about that? I'm not... Yeah, I'm not sure whether Gary Kirsten was, was up for doing all roles because he was in the mix uh, the last time the coach was appointed when Chris Silverwood was appointed. But whether he's changed, had a change of heart or indeed whether Rob Key decides that he does want to have split coaching for red ball and white ball and maybe that's more appealing to different coaches. But it did not work harmoniously when England last did it, when it was Ashley Giles in charge of white ball and Andy Flower in charge of red ball. There was constantly a bit of push and tug as to you know, which which format had priority. And when you haven't got the players available to them, it does make for uh, not the most harmonious of setups. But those are all things which will have to be unpicked and decided very, very quickly because the first test match for the men is the beginning of June. Yeah, Alison, just very quickly about the whole managing director thing. I mean, is it not a professional job? Why must you have a cricketer? What's the criteria anyway? Do you have to have 75 test matches, 100 one days or what? I mean, just I think they like a product and have a professional manager as the managing director. There are hundreds out there who run fabulous companies and large organizations. This is an organization to be run. So why are we leaning on, I mean, there's a, there's a cricket manager, there's a cricket side to it, but a managing director really needs to get on with uh, managing the whole organization and successfully and efficiently. And there are many out there who are fabulous managers. How about Maybe that? Maybe lots of those fabulous managers didn't want to join an organization that doesn't currently have a chair and has a chief executive who's been rumoured to be leaving you know, multiple times over the last year or two. That could also be part of it. Well, that is all we've got time for on this week's Stump. So my thanks to Jim Maxwell and Cherry Sharma. And of course, to you all for watching. Make sure you join us again next week. We'll be here. See you then. Bye. From the BBC World Service, in association with ABC and All India Radio, this is Stumped.